Section 10 of the Gypsy Wife quilt has 11 blocks and six of those are square and square. But they're in three different sizes. So here I have square and square three and a half, no, three inch square and square three and a half inch and then square and square four inch. We've been through square and square so many times. I feel like I can do this in my sleep. So you have a center square, four smaller squares, corner to corner, stitch, trim, and then press open, and then repeat on the other corners after pressing open the square and square triangles on the corners.
Okay, bye. Keep in touch. Do you have the artwork? I've got it. Okay. And there are the square and square and square and square and square and square and square. Six square and square. And this section has two pinwheels. One simple pinwheel, which is laid out like so. Four different triangles of one color, four triangles of another color, cut from squares into half square triangles, and one simple finished pinwheel. And one complicated pinwheel. And by complicated, I mean there's a pinwheel, and then a square and square, and then courthouse steps. There's lots of things going on here. So let's pick apart the pinwheel. So the pinwheel are the teeny tiny triangles that you cut four triangles of one fabric and four triangles of another fabric. And then there are four triangles that are a little bit bigger than those. And then there are the rectangles. So the small triangles are what makes the pinwheel. So we make our pinwheel like so, and then the other four triangles that are the same size finish that pinwheel. and then stitch up the pinwheel just like you did for the simple pinwheel. The second step is the square and square. So now this center pinwheel is essentially functioning as the center square of a square and square. And then the four triangles go on the four edges on the way that I'm showing this layout. The square is now on point. So then that would be stitched on and pressed. And then the final step is the courthouse steps. So our courthouse steps are going to go on the outsides. So a few more steps for that more complicated pinwheel block. And there's the finished complicated pinwheel with the pinwheel in the center, square and square, and courthouse steps. Gypsy Wife Section 10 has two square and square with courthouse steps. A small one that has one set of courthouse steps, and then a larger one that has two sets of courthouse steps. So let's work on the smaller one first. So the smaller one is a square and square. And for this square and square, the instructions have you um, cut out the square and then triangles. So the triangles are used 
to border that square like that stitch along those two edges and then press that out okay for the smaller square and square with courthouse steps the courthouse steps go on to the center block first And then the triangles make the square and the square part. So center square, courthouse steps, rooster, square and square. So for the larger square and square with courthouse steps, it's the exact same process for the first round of courthouse steps. And then for the square and square triangles. So now that's on point. Now the final courthouse steps border is added. So I'll assemble that. And there's the larger square and square with two rounds of courthouse steps. I actually like the way that turned out. So the last block that I'm doing for section 10 of the Gypsy Wife and for the entire Gypsy Wife quilt is one more puss in corner. So we've made this before but in this one, um, I've changed up the fabrics a little bit, so let's kind of unpack what we have here. So I'm going to press that out real quick because those like, look a little wrinkled. So here's what we have. There is a fabric square that goes in the center. There are four fabric squares to go around that. There are um, four fabric squares that go in a row around that. The same fabric I used for the outer triangles, um, which is according to the instructions in the book. And then those get paired with a different fabric of triangles. And then the whole thing gets wrapped with some courthouse steps. So I'm going to move my courthouse steps out of the way for just one second and assemble the puss in the corner. So these are the squares that go here. And then these go beyond that. And then the triangles create squares that go in the corners. And then the instructions actually have the assembly in rows. So this is how everything gets laid out. And then the assembly says stitch together in three rows as follows. So this is a row this is a row and then this is a row so I'm gonna stitch those rows and then come back so the top and bottom row are essentially identical there are half square triangles that make the squares and then the two small squares in the center flip one around to go on the top and one on the bottom and then the four the five squares just get stitched together in a row and then those three rows get assembled together like so. And then the final step is the border. 
So add the border pieces to the top and bottom first, and then to the sides. And there is my finished Puss in Corner block. Okay, so I've got all of the blocks done for section 10, and I've cut all of the strips according to the section 10 cutting diagram. Now every section has different number of strips. Um, a lot of people use strips in different colorways to create more of um, a nice flow in the strips from the left to the right of the quilt. Um, I'm using whites and a tan but I've got them so that they line up throughout the whole quilt. So I've got them numbered. Um, so I've got five different fabrics and then I've got them numbered and I try to um, match that number up. And I actually wrote on the section 10 cutting diagram in my pattern book. So I could um, keep them in order. So really there is no trick to doing the sections. Um, the only thing that might be really, really helpful is a design wall or somewhere that you can lay out all of the strips and all of the blocks uh, before you start to assemble them. Um, the design wall is probably the number one most helpful thing uh, because then you can just put it up on the design wall and then figure out where everything goes and then um, sew from there. Uh, I don't have a design wall. I would like one, but I don't have one yet. And what I did is I cut all of the strips according to the cutting diagram, and then I kind of portioned them into groups. So I made um, seven groups out of the um, sections. So I've got seven different, I've labeled them with like little post-it note things. So I've got individual groups, and then I'm going to assemble um, based on that group. So for example, so really you just need to take your time with this. This is not a fast project. So just take your time with assembling the strips and the blocks. And then the two, the 10 sections all get put together into the final Gypsy Wife quilt. 